What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Copart for another walk around. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. We're going to start this video out with a 2019 GMC Terrain with hail damage. This is one of those bright metallic cars. Now, when I say bright, I'm not talking about like, like white or silver, bright red. It is definitely blue, but when it's in the sun, hopefully you can see it, the sun is trying to go down on me, but in the sun, it's a really bright blue, but as soon as you get into the shade, well, it gets really dark and it's also very dirty. But with all of that metallic flake, when the sun's shining down on this thing, those hail dings are gonna be really hard to see. In fact, even when I'm standing over it, they're so tiny. This is like pea-sized hail. I mean, it is itty bitty hail damage, guys. This is one I would drive no problem. No problem at all, because even standing up next to it, unless you're really looking for it, you're never going to see it. And that's the beautiful thing. You know, when you do this as long as I have, you come out here, you look at all these cars, you will find, you get just, you get to where you can see everything. Every little imperfection just stands out like a sore thumb. But for the average consumer, for the average person that's just walking by the car, they're probably never going to see the hail damage on this. So most people are just going to see a really nice, brightly colored um, GMC Terrain all-wheel drive SLT. It's got good tires. This side's got quite a bit of hail damage, so you can tell the hail came on this side of the car. But this is one I wouldn't hesitate to drive, like not at all. This is beautiful. I can't believe how clean it is. It smells good. The interior looks like someone took really good care of it. I mean, just look at it, the dashboard. This is cleaner than my cars. That's not saying much, but it is. It's cleaner than my cars. I wonder how many miles are on this thing. Um, not the biggest fan of the GMC terrain. I'll be the first to admit that, but this is a sharp looking vehicle, in my opinion anyway. I know some of you are gonna disagree with me on that, but I like it. Uh, the air freshener is a little strong in this one. Um, there's a little too much. I don't know where it is. It smells like some kind of laundry detergent or something. It smells good. It, it does. It's just, it's too much. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. It's when you, it's when you walk past a, a chick that put on way too much perfume or a guy that put on way too much cologne. It's like, wow, what are you covering up? That's all I want to know. Fired right up. It's got some miles. I hear a rattle. And that is not just direct injection. There's something else going on there. Um, All-wheel drive, error, service, ESC, TPMS. Uh-oh. Flashing check engine light. Full tank of gas. I don't like that noise. I'm going to shut it off. Yeah, I'm going to shut it off. I don't like that noise. Let's pop the hood. I'm assuming... And I'm probably wrong, but I'm assuming this is the, the 3.6 liter, which is a great engine. It's 69,000 miles on the odometer is nothing. I'm very confused. This is a rental car as well. Oh, it's a, it's a little Ecotec. Well, these are great engines too. Why are you making so much noise, little guy? All right, hold on. Let me put... Let me put this hood prop up real quick and we'll take a we'll take a closer look down here where is the oil dipstick let's just have a look um it appears to have oil oh it's got smoke coming out of the uh the dipstick tube there i don't know if you guys can see that but yep that's that's not good <laughs> that is that is not good. Look at all the smoke coming out of there, or steam. Okay, well. That's crazy, guys. That is crazy. It looks to me like it's got oil, but uh, yeah, if you got smoke coming out of the crankcase, generally not a good sign, um, especially when it's combined with a knocking, tapping, rattling uh, type scenario. So this is one that even though I think it looks great, and I'm honestly surprised this is a rental car. I've, I'm really shocked. With 69,000 miles on the odometer, rental cars usually don't stick around that long, guys. So 
yeah unfortunately this is not one i'm going to be interested in so moving right along i know i know i know uh, hyundai elantra is not an interesting car but i'm willing to take a look at it anyway because it's a 2019 elantra sharp looking car nice uh, like it's got triple projector headlights in the front that's insane black with these crazy looking wheels guys I know it's an Elantra, but I like it, and I don't care what anybody thinks. This is a decent looking car. I'm wondering if this is a theft recovery. I'm, <laughs> I'm betting money that this has been stolen. Maybe the window's busted out. No, it's not. Okay, so then I really don't know why it's here. It's an Elantra Sport Edition. Uh, it's been repainted. Wow, that's got orange peel for miles, guys. Wow. That door, holy crap. The reflection in that, you can't even... Oh, this one too. This is not normal orange peel, okay? All cars, almost all cars come with natural orange peel, but this is, yeah, I can literally see sanding marks, sa deep sanding scratches in the paint. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It probably doesn't come out for you on camera, but yeah, at, at a minimum, this whole side has been painted. I mean, that's at a minimum. The rest of it is so dirty it's hard to really see this whole car has been painted yeah the entire car it's all orange peel like that oh boy and then something else i'm noticing is the gap up here look at the gap between the bumper and the hood the hood is supposed to rest right on top of this not you're not supposed to be able to fit your whole fingers in here with the hood closed i i don't think guys yep there's definitely something going on with this one I'm assuming this one was in a pretty gnarly front end collision and uh, you know somebody bought it and repaired it rebuilt it and here we go interior smells absolutely awful really bad um, boy that's that's not good it looks like someone stuck a crowbar in here and just pried wow oh wow yeah my goodness that's really sad look at the damage i mean someone just kind of went ham on this thing that's no good Sixty-four thousand miles on the odometer i love the seats uh black with red stitching nice heavy bolsters i mean the seats look really nice let me see if i can get in here and it's got power we'll go ahead and fire it up but this is one that i'm uh what do you think the chances are it still has an airbag light on? It's got an exhaust leak. Pretty sure it's got an exhaust leak. Let's see. What do we got? We have a uh, collision avoidance light, ABS light, TPMS sensor, traction control, but no airbag light. So that's good. Looks like we got air conditioning turned on. We'll see if that works. You got heated seats, and what do you got down here? Drive mode. Oh, wow. Sport. Smart. Normal. Sport. Uh, okay. Sure. It goes right into gear. Forward. Backwards. Um, air conditioning. I don't have anything yet, but I'm hoping that it's on its way we'll see there's a hammer and a screwdriver in the glove box in scissors that's different sure let's see if the uh, important window works it does less important window works oh what is this a vape pin or something in there well we won't uh we won't touch that either Well, I mean, it runs, but this thing is, this thing is, steering feels, there's a clunk, yeah, a pretty significant, a pretty significant clunk um, going right, <laughs> who knows what that is. Air conditioning, I think, is working, yeah, I think, I think it's working, so, joy. Let's pop the trunk. Let's go see under the hood. Yeah, she's got a nasty little exhaust leak. 
Oh boy, this is full of somebody's stuff. Battery charger back there too, with a battery, I assume. You got some Wrangler jeans, some jumper cables, bags full of stuff, so we're not gonna touch any of that. We don't wanna mess with, uh, don't wanna mess with other people's property. It's different if we win it. You know, if we were to win it, I have a blast going through, you know, stuff, bags, and seeing what's in it. Um, we found some interesting things in some some vehicles that we purchased. So that's a lot of fun for me. Definitely a, a nasty exhaust leak from back there. You can also see we've got broken tabs on the headlights. Um, looks like all the clips, well, nope, it's missing a clip there. It's missing a clip there. Missing a clip there. And it's got a sheet metal screw holding the headlight assembly in place. Yeah, she's been in a front end collision for sure. And somebody... <laughs> I use the term rebuilt lightly here, okay? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's rough, guys. Um, and as fun as it would be to go through all the bags and see what's in it, I don't think it's worth it to me to buy the whole car. It smells. Wow. Yeah, you know, this one would be fun to get on the lift and uh, take a look underneath and see exactly what's going on under there. I got a feeling there's more than meets the eye on this one, especially since the entire car was repainted. The whole thing. The headlight is damaged. The bumper is damaged. The hood doesn't match up at all. And the orange peel is so bad on this, guys. Like, this is, this is a really bad paint job. So... I don't think this is one I would be interested in at all. So here's another one that I suspect has been cobbled back together. A 2021 Nissan Versa. I could be wrong. We'll, we'll take a closer look at it and see how it looks. I mean, first and foremost, this does not, that's not right. Something, it looks like they ran into a fence that's what it looks like, like a barbed wire fence or something. Just drove right through it. The back bumper is really, uh, it's pretty chewed up back here, guys. That's pretty rough. I mean, oh, <laughs> hold on. I almost missed the bullet hole. Wow, that's a, yeah, that's a, it's a good sized bullet hole there, isn't it? Huh, how about that? Does it have bullet holes anywhere else? Just one? Like, someone just fired one shot at it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's going on there? That's, uh... That's crazy. Like, look how perfectly cut that is. That almost looks like someone just went right across it with a knife. Wow. Oh, man. You know, I wish cars could talk. I really do. I, I would love to hear the stories that these things have uh, because it's not good. It's not good. So many of these cars <laughs> live a really rough life. Now I'm interested in that bullet hole. I'm wondering, did it get stopped in the trunk or did it continue on through the seat? I'll bet it stopped in the trunk would be my, that'd be my guess. Yeah, I don't see any uh, smells again. Smells like weed, but uh, yeah, see, I don't even see a bullet hole in the back of the seat either so i'll bet the trunk itself stopped it somewhere in there we'll uh we'll pop the trunk and take a closer look this one just became a lot more interesting to me it hey come back um it does have power and you know a bullet hole that's not that's not that bad right sure let's take a look and see uh see what happened oh wow What the heck happened here? So, okay, here's just an assumption. The bullet went through, right? And that bullet just lines up perfectly with this hinge. And if you look, the hinge has paint peeling, right? So the bullet obviously hit here and stopped. So it went through the wiring harness and I guess somebody cut all the wires for the taillights and everything and 
they were going to do something with it. I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But obviously the bullet penetrated the wiring harness, which would have been attached like right here. So the bullet went through it, hit right here and, you know, it stopped. Interesting, which means the bullet should still be here somewhere. I do wonder where. It'd be interesting if we could, uh, you know, if we could find it. Nope. Well, maybe this thing was looked over by the police and the police found it, but... Yeah, all those broken wires, that's not good. That's not good at all. Like I said, it, it definitely, it smells, it smells pretty bad. I guess that depends on who you are. Some people love the smell of this stuff, and I personally just, nah. Not for me don't care for the smell of Mary Jane. Looks like it's a good old push to start. You got two key fobs, which is nice. Oh, is it? Does it not start? It's only got 39,000 miles on the odometer. Am I supposed to stick the key somewhere? I don't. And look at this. They kept the clamshell that would have had your ignition in it. They just covered it up. It's, that's funny. That's where you would have stuck your key. Um, I don't see anywhere that you would, uh, you would stick your key fob, but it doesn't. Oh, no key detected. Really? Uh-oh. Well, the screen just went blank. What is going on? Yeah, it does nothing now. Just a flashing security light. Okay. This car's got a... You know, maybe it's got something to do with 30 cut wires that some of them were randomly spliced together in the trunk that may not even go where they spliced them together. Could be a dead battery. I don't know, guys. Um, I mean, everything under the hood looks to be intact. There's some, oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Somebody's been, somebody's been messing with this one. I love these. These are fun because they're kind of like mysteries that you gotta, come on. Well, the first mystery is how to get the hood prop. There we go. To sit in here. But if you look over here, it looks like somebody, oh, there's like a yellow jacket right there. Ooh, you see him? Right there. Yeah, uh, so somebody's been in here. That can't be good. Um, spider webs. Probably also not good. Another fuse box that's been open. Somebody's definitely been screwing around under here. Why don't I throw a jump on it real quick? Let's see if it just needs a jump start, but I'm betting that there's something very, very wrong with this car. All right, so the battery was dead. So that'll do it. It's only got five volts in it. That'll definitely keep the car from being able to start. So let's see what it does now. Oh, come on. No. <laughs> nope. Nothing. It seems like the ignition's on. Pushed brake and start switch. I'm doing it. Malfunction. See owner's manual. <laughs> yeah. See, the uh, the keys work. Hear it? The keys function. But for some reason, it, uh, it doesn't... Yeah, pushing start does nothing. Okay. I mean, the start button works because it turns on the ignition. You can clearly see everything comes on. You hold the brake, push start, and nothing. It does absolutely nothing. Well, 39,000 miles. Somebody's, somebody's been messing around is what it is. I don't know what's been done to it, but yeah, she definitely doesn't start. Could it have something to do with that wiring harness in the trunk? I really don't think so, guys. Those wires should control nothing but, like, the, the lights. That's all that I would think they work back there is the parking lights, turn signals, brake lights, things of that nature. 
Um, what's more concerning to me than that damaged harness in the trunk is that somebody's been under here messing around. There could be a missing relay, there could be a missing fuse. Uh, who knows what's been done under here. There's just, yeah, I don't know. That's unfortunate because it is a very low miles car and it probably won't go for a whole lot seeing as it doesn't run and it's got flat tires and a bullet hole and wiring problems. I, I don't think this is gonna go for a whole lot of money. It could be fun to see if we could get it running, but truthfully, I don't know that I'm really all that interested in this car to begin with. This will probably be a quick one. I have a hunch this one doesn't run. A 2013 BMW 528XI. I like the color. It's got good tires. So far, it looks pretty good. X-Drive, so this is an all-wheel drive vehicle. Huh. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, does it, guys? Let me walk you to the front, and I'm going to tell you why I think that this thing doesn't run, or at a minimum doesn't drive. Yep. It's got the tow hook of death. That's usually a really bad sign. Also notice that the bumper is, uh, well... Yeah, it looks like somebody, somebody went over something there, doesn't it? That makes me worry that there's something very wrong with this car. We're going to take a look at it anyway, though. It's a nice car. 2013, a little bit older. 528, excuse me, definitely not <coughs> the most desirable. Smells good, though. And look at this interior. Clean. Spacious. Smells good. Again, kind of like kind of like perfume but that's fine yeah I like this I don't care that it's a 528 I'll take it oh I can't fit in it wow power of course not European car man there's never power in these things like ever yeah well you got a lot of buttons I drive stuff and comfort and sport traction control hill descent control camera parking sensors Auto hold, I guess that's for a gear. You could auto hold any gear you choose, maybe. Parking brake on and off. Climate control, and then your stereo. Of course, everything is controlled by this re relatively large screen right here. You've got another screen right here, the instrument cluster. I love the screens on these, I really do. These are decent. Um, hood, trunk, and then over here you've got collision avoidance, lane departure warning. Um, I don't know what that one is. This one right here. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that is. That's collision avoidance. That's going to be lane keep assist. And I don't know what that one is either. Or that one. So there's two of them that I'm just lost on. Memory seats, of course. Huh. So I wonder what happened to this car. I wonder how badly it's damaged. Oh, let me guess. Come on. Come on. Uh, there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little bitty four-banger turbo under the hood there. I wonder what size that is. Surely it's not actually a 2.5 like the uh, series designates, right? It wouldn't. It wouldn't be that easy. And uh, is it right here? Nope. Just says use synthetic oil. So I don't know where the emissions label is. There it is. It's hiding way under here. And blah, blah, blah. It is a, I can't see that far down there, guys. Um, yeah, I can't see. It looks like it's a 2.0. If I'm reading that right, it's a two liter. So uh, 28i, nope. It is definitely not 2.8 liters. Looks like it's just a, uh, a two liter. Looks like it's pretty easy to work on though. And I, I almost scare myself saying that because BMW and easy to work on are not, two things that generally go together, but this is such a tiny engine. There's so much room. Uh-oh. There's a hose here that's disconnected from what looks like some type of a solenoid down there. I wonder what happens if you plug that back on. Let's, let's see what happens. Oh, that doesn't even, yeah. I mean, it goes there for sure, but what is leaking? Oh boy. Oh, there's a line here that's disconnected. Is that fuel? There's a, a line right here that... Huh. How about that? Yep, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this car 
does not run guys but we're gonna put a booster pack on it real quick and just see what it does all right well i hooked it up i want to make sure i don't have any heat um it sparked like there's quite a bit of spark when i hooked it up to the ground i just want to make sure my wires aren't getting warm because if they are that means we got a serious problem it's sitting at 12 volts I think it's all right. I don't see anything smoking underneath the hood. I don't smell anything. You just never know with these cars, guys. Some of them are, uh... That don't sound good, does it? That don't sound good at all. No. All right, hey, stop stop all right well we made short work of this one i told you i didn't think this one was going to run it tried it did and sounded like it wanted to a couple times but ultimately this one is dead as a doornail i don't know where my bag is either that sucks this one i was actually kind of interested in but uh yeah, I'm not sure that the damage on the lower part of the bumper has anything to do with it not wanting to run. In fact, I'm willing to bet it doesn't. I just think, I think it's broken. And that's all there is to it. Let's see what else we can find. Now, I already know what you're thinking. Why are we looking at a 2014 Dodge Avenger? Well, the reason is because this car is probably going to be very, very cheap. It's got damage all down the side. <laughs> and we haven't even gotten to the other side yet front tires flat back tire looks decent um she's rough she's real rough but if it runs and if it drives this could be something you could pick up relatively cheap obviously it's been in some kind of an accident and it's been put back together i, I almost hate saying it's been put back together again because there's clearly things that are that are very wrong with this like the bumper didn't get painted you know so i guess that's fine but then you can clearly see the wheel or something went into this fender and severely damaged it it doesn't line up right anymore uh, that's okay though um, it's rusting and all of that then you look in here and you realize there's no there's no fender liner anywhere in there so you know they didn't take care of that the tires are rotten like completely cracked and there is no tread remaining so that's fine this is probably a very solid little car nope no the more i look at it the more uh i see that this is uh <laughs> this is cobbled together take a look at that tire again there's like nothing left of it and it's just dry rotted and falling apart um no no i don't think this is a uh i don't think this is a good one we're gonna look at it anyway though because i'm already here sniff actually surprisingly it doesn't smell particularly bad i mean here's here's where i'm at guys for a beater car if it runs i could throw tires on it you know what i mean is it really that big a deal to put a set of tires on a car no it's not it's not that big of a deal it's not the end of the world um the bumper you know who cares it's again not it's just not that big of a deal i don't think there's any power no of course not somebody did a a bad job installing this double din radio in here that doesn't you can fit your whole hand behind the bezel the bezel for the shifter is missing that's fun let's pop the hood see what she's working with is it a four cylinder or is it my favorite v6 because i love the v6s in these don't love so much doing a tune-up on them you have to remove the uh, upper plenum or at least get it out of the way um up oh, it's a what is it it's a v6 goodness it took me a minute i didn't even know what i was looking at I'm so used to seeing like big fancy engine covers and you can clearly see there's supposed to be one here i was looking and i was like what the heck is this yep that's the v6 that i like um boy it doesn't look great does it no it does not look very good under here okay boy um <laughs> i'm gonna regret this well we're gonna find out if it runs i mean if it runs 
and it goes into gear and it's something that they don't want a whole lot of money for you know i've driven worse that's all i'm that's about all i can say is i've driven worse so it's not really the end of the world it looks not so bad on this side uh yeah it looks bad it does let me throw a jump on it real quick guys let's see if it's even going to run well i hear noises that's a good sign so let's see uh number one how many miles does this thing have on it oh wow well uh hmm hopefully the tapping goes away because that doesn't sound very good 136,000 miles on the odometer on this one boy that doesn't uh that doesn't sound good guys normally if these cars have been sitting a while um they may tap like that for 30 seconds tops no no uh-uh shut her down that's definitely abnormal oh man well i don't know what the noise is on this but i can tell you that it sounds like a lifter tap top end kind of noise definitely not good i mean she's got oil and the oil doesn't look too bad um yeah i don't want something like this to have to deal with guys i don't know what's making all that racket but it ain't good next a lease return looks like a 2017 ram pro master city i'm not sure that i've ever seen one of these before but take a minute to just kind of take that all in yep great looking delivery vehicle or commercial vehicle for you know i don't know plumbing or electrical it's a good looking van i think i like that it doesn't have a bunch of windows like this is really designed for work i think it'd be even better though if it didn't have this window either um oh it's still got a it's still got stuff in it take a look at this it's got like this thick wow silicon too window back here why do you need a window back there i don't uh I don't understand that it smells it's pretty rank back here as well let's see what all's back here i mean i'm not going to mess with anything but it doesn't hurt just to look and see what they've got um dover selector parts um we got bearings like wheels is what that looks like looks like some circuitry stuff lots of nuts and bolts looks like we got a little battery it's bad that uh that almost looks like an elevator switch going up emergency stop apc that should be a little battery backup for like a computer or something looks like we have an oil filter or possibly a fuel filter with the housing huh yeah what was all this i don't know i don't have a clue but this is a lease return vehicle so it's been used and now they're done with it it actually looks pretty good the interior is not torn up or trashed well i could use something like this for what i don't know but i could absolutely use something like this dead as a doornail too of course yeah that uh-oh damn you can't even get the key out it's like a mercedes right this is probably during the time of daimler chrysler or something like that i could be wrong i don't know what is this push pull huh that's weird <laughs> that's really weird is the hood open yes it is so we'll take a look under here and see what she's working with oh man yes the 2.4 multi-air oh boy yep um spider webs come free of charge does have an interstate battery though which is really nice what do you think the miles are on this thing i'm going to put the hood prop up because obviously it's dead there we go huh 
I'm going to throw a jump on it real quick, guys. Let's just see what it does. Obviously, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I don't think very many of you would be interested in seeing this vehicle, but it's the last one. So I figured we'd give it a chance. Hey, it runs and the radio works. What more do you want? Let's turn on the air conditioning. We'll see if that works. I'm curious to see how many miles are on this thing. Service engine soon. And then we have left door service engine. Great. What if we don't care about any of that? Let's close the door. And what do you, you just pull to open and push to lock. I don't like that. The important window works. Less important window works. We do have a check engine light on and the miles are 101,451 miles. It actually runs pretty decent. Let's put it in gear. Brakes feel good. Yep, drive, it goes forwards and well, I hope it's got a backup cam. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It goes backwards, very nice. You have an aux input, USB input. There ain't much here, guys. You got a couple of power points, one there and one there. It's got the books and a straw from Sonic, a little cubby hole right there. Air conditioning, hmm, I heard the compressor kick on, but it's not particularly cold. It's got a rear view mirror so you can see the wall behind you. That's always nice. You really, it's important for safety reasons. You want to be able to see the, you want to be able to see the wall behind you. No, I don't think so. I, I don't know guys. Um, it's, uh oh, give me the key back, man. It's an interesting, little van um i'll give it that and if i could get it cheap enough this would be something i would absolutely bring to the channel i'm not quite sure what i could use this for or what i would need it for therefore i'm uh yeah i'm not gonna bid on this one so you guys have at it this is all yours you can have it if the price is right um truthfully though aside from the battery being completely dead and probably shot um if it's under warranty and I'm not sure if it is or not. I don't see the date code on the uh, on the battery. I don't see it anywhere. But if that battery is still under warranty, the great thing about Interstate, and the reason I like them so much, is even if you didn't buy this battery, you can buy a vehicle that has the battery that's still under warranty. You can carry that battery into Interstate, and they'll swap it out for you. It's like no questions asked, no fees, no fines, nothing like that. Just bring it in, and they take care of it. Not sponsored, by the way. I wish. <laughs> hey, Interstate, if you're listening please because i'm always buying batteries always uh yeah interstate batteries are definitely uh, a good way to go so with that i think we are going to conclude this video hope you all enjoyed this video if you did do me a favor hit the thumbs up button and drop your comments below consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed and until next time stay safe out there everybody i look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one